please make sure to check with your doctor before starting any new workout program. This is a 30 minute full body workout I specifically designed for runners. I've seen quite a few runners using a generic strength training plan. Using a more sport specific training routine can help runners decrease their risk of injury by correcting common imbalances and by improving hip and joint stability. You're also likely to make gains in running performance as your stride efficiency and muscular strength and endurance are improved. That's why it's important to select the proper rep range and proper tempo for your goals. I'll be using dumbbells for one of the exercises in this workout, but if you don't have dumbbells available, just improvise by using whatever you can find around your home, as long as you can hold it securely. In the worst case, you can complete the exercise without holding any weight at all. I recommend warming up beforehand. Click the info card at the top right for a link to a warm-up video. Let's start in the kneeling position to stretch our hip flexors. Place your right foot out in front, tuck in your hips, squeeze your glutes, and lean your body forward. You should feel this in the front of your left hip. We'll hold this for 30 seconds and do this twice on each leg. Make sure you're keeping your hips square and your chest up. Switch legs. Remember to square your hips, tuck in your tailbone, and lean forward. You may have heard that you should avoid static stretching at the beginning of a workout. That depends on the purpose. If you run regularly, your hip flexors no doubt get a lot of work and may get overactive or tight. Right now we're both lengthening the hip flexors and inhibiting them so we can get the glutes to engage more during this workout. Switch back to the right. Another reason we're doing this stretch is that tight hip flexors can pull your knees inward during squats or lunges, and even during running. This is also known as knee valgus. Switch back to the left side one more time. Let's go on to our back for dead bugs. Lying flat on your back with your arms at your sides, pick up your knees so they're pointing straight at the ceiling. Using your core muscles to keep your lower back flat, extend your right leg until it's close to the floor without setting it down. Pause for a count of two and then bring it back in, alternating legs. I'm going to demonstrate 10 reps each leg. Stop and rest when you can no longer keep strict form. You can always do more next time. That was two. Three. For runners, this is a more functional core exercise than crunches, and in many cases a better option than the plank for teaching your abdominal muscles to engage, so long as your lower back remains flat. Five, halfway there. Go ahead and lower your feet and flip over onto your hands and knees for bird dog.
Place your hands right below your shoulders and your knees right below your hips. Make sure your back is nice and flat. Without arching your back, lift your right arm and extend your left leg. Hold for a count of two, lower slowly, and repeat on the same side. Don't allow your hips to lean or pivot. If you can't keep your hips stable, you can try just moving your arm or just moving your leg at first. I'm going to demonstrate 15 on each side. If you're just starting, remember, stop and rest when you can no longer keep good form. This is 10. If you're still with me, five more. But remember, quality is more important than quantity. Fifteen. Lower slowly and switch right away. This is one. Remember to keep your lower back flat and don't let your hips pivot or lean. Exercises like the bird dog build core stability. This helps you reduce unwanted movement while you run. That's five. This is 10. Fifteen. Let's flip onto our back for another set of dead bugs. Just like before, bring your knees up to point at the ceiling. Hold your lower back flat as you extend your right leg. Pause for two seconds and bring it back in. Alternating for 10 on each leg. That's one. Two. Three. Four. Stop and rest whenever you need to. Five. Try to do more and more each week. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Last one each leg. Ten. Good. Flip back to your hands and knees for one more set of bird dog. Make sure your lower back is flat and your hips remain level. Starting with the right arm and left leg again. Go ahead and lift for one. Remember, do all the reps on one side before switching. Two, this is five.
15. Get ready to switch. Left arm and right leg. This is one. Two. Keep your core braced to maintain a flat back. Five. Fifteen. If you'd like to pause the video here and go back and do a third set of those two exercises, go ahead. Otherwise, lie on your left side for the side-lying leg lift. Bend your left leg and bring your left arm under your head for support. And keeping your right leg straight and in line with your body, lift it straight up, pausing, and lower slowly. Make sure your toes are pointing straight ahead. Try to keep the same tempo as me here. I'm going to demonstrate 20 reps. But I recommend starting small, like 8 to 12 reps, if you haven't done this before. Be sure not to skip this one, because along with that hip flexor stretch we did earlier, this exercise can help keep your knees from drifting inward when you run or squat or lunge. Twenty. Switch sides. Bend your right leg and bring your right arm under your head for support. This is one. Make sure your left leg is aligned with the rest of your body. And only do as many as you can with strict form. Five. Let's switch back to your left side. One, check your body position. Notice I've got my right hand on my hip to make sure my hip bones are stationary. Five. 
10. Twenty. Good. Switch sides one more time. And begin. That's one. Five. Twenty. Excellent. If two sets of 20 wasn't enough to reach fatigue, you're welcome to pause the video here and do a third set. Otherwise, it's a good time to shake off your legs and take a water break. After a short rest to get your balance back after those side-lying leg lifts, let's do some reverse lunge to balance. Start with your left knee at hip level, flexing your toes upward. Step back into a lunge position, then return to the starting position with your left knee raised. Repeat on the same leg until all reps are complete. Pause both at the bottom of each lunge and while balancing at the top of each rep. Follow my slow tempo so we can build endurance and stability in your legs. When you step back, make sure that your right knee is pointing straight ahead. Notice the angle in my knees and ankles when I step back. Stop when you can no longer maintain good form, but remember to do the same number of reps on the other leg. By the way, if your foot taps down between reps, no big deal, but if the balance is really distracting, you can skip the balance part and just do a regular reverse lunge. This is 10, but stop when you need to. You can always push for more next week. This is 20. Before we switch legs, let's shake it out and rest a few seconds just in case you were with me all the way to 20. And pick up your right leg. Step back for one. Make sure every time you step back, your left knee is pointing straight ahead. Focus on your balance.
10. Do the same number of reps you did on the first leg. Five left if you're going to 20. Excellent. This is where you can use those dumbbells I mentioned earlier. Let's get to the mat for glute bridge floor press. Lie onto your back and make sure your feet are close enough to reach with your fingertips. Grab your dumbbells or improvised weights. Don't worry if you don't have any, you can at least do the bridge. And raise your hips and squeeze your glutes. Make sure your dumbbells are balanced right over your elbows before you press them up and together. And lower for a count of four. Lightly touch your elbows to the mat and press right back up again. This is three. Four. Five. Just do as many as you can with strict form, whether that means your arms are getting tired or your glutes or lower back is getting tired. Any glute bridge is a great exercise for limbering up the hip flexors and strengthening the glutes. In this variation, we just happen to be working the chest and arms for a more time efficient workout. Excellent. Go ahead and lower your hips, and if you are using weights, set them aside. Let's flip onto our stomach for prone cobra. Start with your arms by your sides and your palms facing down. Lift your hands off the floor, turning your thumbs toward the ceiling. Pull your arms toward your body and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Your neck should be as neutral as possible. I'm going to hold for 60 seconds, but just hold as long as you can maintain good form. Then rest until it's time to do the next set of this circuit. If you're still holding, keep your glutes engaged to protect your lower back. Don't try to lift your chest, just focus on the shoulder blades. Thirty seconds. Fifteen seconds left. Time. Let's rest thirty seconds before we start that whole circuit all over again for one more set. Get ready for reverse lunge to balance again. Alright, let's go. Lift your left leg and step back for one. This is our last round of our last circuit of the workout.
five. Remember as you're doing these, your right knee should be pointing straight ahead. Try to do the same number of reps as the first set. Fifteen. Last five if you're still with me. Twenty. Excellent. Shake it off a few seconds. Let's get ready to start the other leg. Lift your right knee and step back for one. Ten. Fifteen, last five. Twenty. Excellent. Let's go back to the floor for glute bridge floor press. Remember to pull your feet in close enough to touch with your fingertips and get your weights ready if you've got them. Raise your hips, squeezing your glutes. And lift the weight over your chest for one. Lower for a count of four, lightly touch the floor, and lift back up for two. Five, your knees should be pointing straight ahead. Twenty. Good. Only one exercise left. Set your weights aside and let's flip to your stomach for prone cobra. Keep your glutes engaged. Lift your hands, pointing your thumbs toward the ceiling and squeeze your shoulder blades. Pull your arms toward your body. 
Try to hold the same time that you held on the first set. Forty-five seconds left. Thirty seconds left. Fifteen seconds left. Time. Great job. Feel free to go back and do a third round of the final circuit if you want to increase the challenge. And let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me do a more advanced or a stability ball version of this workout. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and support my channel. Thanks for watching.